Well, it finally happened. I went to Ohio. That's it. That's my intro. Hey, I'm Mandy, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about the long-awaited review of the Mothman Festival that takes place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, every year in September. If you're confused by why I'm currently in Ohio, as I'm telling you that, um, it's because though the Mothman Festival, which is completely free to attend and go to and walk around and all this stuff. There's a few paid things. We'll talk about that in a minute. The problem is, is finding a place to sleep when you're here. And as I am based in California, I don't think that's a good commute to attempt for a two day festival. So I booked this hotel back in February, January of this year, and we are now into September. So I am in Ohio. Athens, Ohio, to be specific. It's a about 45 minutes to an hour drive from Point Pleasant, which is basically my average commute to go to the grocery store in Los Angeles. So it doesn't really matter for me. But really quick, I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, twitch.com slash swell entertainment starting the month of october 2023 i am officially going to start streaming on twitch so if you want even more of me and swell entertainment be sure to go check me out over on twitch it'll be linked down below so before we jump on into all of this with the review of the event itself um i should probably explain something very important i love mothman i love mothman okay that's one of my favorite cryptid if well, some people don't think he's a cryptid my favorite unexplained phenomenon how about that? Why is he my favorite? I don't know. He's very baby girl coded and everyone likes Bigfoot. I don't think Mothman gets enough attention. Half of the draw of most of the attractions in Point Pleasant is that it's the only blank Mothman thing in the country. That's it. Like that's half of the draw. There's one, one place <laughs> where Mothman is the star and it's Mothman Festival. So naturally, I, who sometimes goes by Mothmanda when I'm feeling like a smart ass, because if I show up at your event, assume something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> Naturally, I had to get my little butt over here. So I guess going to Mothman Festival is a real test of faith because you really have to decide if you believe the Mothman caused the bridge collapse because you go over like several bridges to get in here. There are things on this world that we cannot explain, okay? And whether or not you choose to believe them is completely up to you. I am not gonna sit here and tell you to believe one thing or not, that's not the point of this video. Basically starting back in 1966 around West Virginia, specifically around the Point Pleasant area, there was a few sightings from different uh, groups of people in cars seeing what they described as a man with wings that was very bird-like, okay? There were some various uh, discrepancies between what they were explaining, but pretty much most of them mentioned that they had a 10-foot wingspan. All black, glowing red eyes, 10-foot wingspan following their cars, impossibly fast. And then in December of 1967, the bridge going over the Ohio River connecting Ohio to West Virginia collapsed. And there were some reports of people seeing what looked like a bird-type man near the bridge before it collapsed. Tragically, 46 people died that day and two bodies were not found. Some of the survivors of the collapse, whether they were on a ferry boat that was going down the river at the time or the ones that were actually on the bridge that survived. Some of them described seeing a figure that we later would call the Mothman. Apparently they wanted to call him the Batman, but obviously that was taken at the time. Now, if you watch the movie, The Mothman Prophecies, in that movie they claim the bridge collapse was never identified for like the reason that it collapsed. That's in fact not true. The reasons were identified. Basically bridges back then didn't have any contingency plans. The bridges you see nowadays pretty much all have a contingency plan. If one thing fails, three other things are probably going to keep it in place. This bridge did not have any contingency plans. So I believe it was one rusted rivet or something just had too much pressure on it. And once it snapped, everything went crumbling down. So because we know the cause of the collapse, most people to my understanding believe that Mothman is not in fact causing problems and pitch collapses and terrible things to happen to people once they see him. In fact, he is more of a omen, a harbinger of doom trying to let you know that the doom is coming. There continued to be some Mothman sightings between 1960s and the 1970s, and now it kind of is up in the air on whether or not Mothman currently still exists or if you will see him or if he will appear or what have you, okay? There have been times where he has been seen in other states, but they're not the ones throwing a Mothman festival, so we're not talking about that. But Point Pleasant is very into celebrating the Mothman, including having a giant statue of him in their main street, which is kind of a big deal. And I know what you're thinking, Amanda, they want to celebrate something that reminds them of this horrible tragedy that happened in the 60s. 
when the reminder brings in cash and tourism dollars, you bet your butt they will do that. Literally one of the best things that a small town could have going for it is a haunting or a cryptid. You think I'm kidding. I'm not. The Mothman Festival has been going on for years now, and I am starting to notice that um, I should expect far less from small town events. I mean, 4,000 people is a lot of people, but like I had more people than that that went to my high school. So like that feels weird in my brain. But my point was saying that I expect less is that um, I shouldn't expect them to um, update social media at all or um, update their website at all because the same thing happened with Penhurst Paracon and that though specifically was not a small town event that was like a small organization thing and I, I later heard from employees of Penhurst that were like yeah you hit the nail on the head with the communication thing basically it's just one of those things where it's like the older generations are used to doing something one way and they don't want to update it in a way that might be better for younger generations to learn about and deal with. Yeah, it's all on Facebook. I should have known. <laughs> I'm so annoying. I should have checked this sooner. The Mothman Festival website has the current dates and that's a little bit of it. There wasn't a whole lot of updates happening leading up to the event. I just knew the dates and that it was free because like I said, the event is entirely free, which is great. And basically it's my understanding from what I experienced with the staff working the event and everything is that this is very much a labor of love. An event like this with this many people, like I said, it pretty much books out and sells out every surrounding accommodation for sleeping there's the low hotel on main street that's booked out like four years in advance all right for the mothman festival it's like a big deal for local economy not just for housing obviously but restaurants people got to eat gas stations in the area uh little things you don't think about like that uh shops people like souvenirs maybe they don't want something that's specifically mothman but like your little soap shop down off the street of main street it's gonna get some some cash because I bought these in Point Pleasant, West Virginia at the Mothman Festival. But I think that's why the event itself, it's free. One, it started small. It's kind of a gr group organized event type of thing, but it's also like what they bring in by keeping it free is pretty much a lot for the area. All right, I am here. I am parked at Kroger Park. Um, I'm parked far, but I knew this was probably an option and it was only $10 for parking, which is not as bad as I was expecting, frankly, but I'm from California, so. Other note for everyone involved, if you're thinking about going to Mothman Festival, bring cash. Some of the places take card, assume none of them do, okay? For the actual festival itself, for the vendors and uh, the food trucks and all of that, just assume none of them take card. There is a bank in town that had an ATM. It ran out of money seemingly, okay? Based on what I was hearing from locals and all of that, uh, pretty regularly, so I vote spring cash i managed to make it through with a whopping seven dollars left today don't don't want to do that again something that is very great about all of the volunteers for the mothman festival for the people working it they wear neon yellow staff event staff shirts wonderful i need to be able to identify you for safety whether it's a a fan funded crowd funded whatever it is event if you are working there so i know where to go a neon bright colored shirt hoodie something great love it fantastic no notes am i destined to have my future bachelor right here i think i am now, a good deal of the businesses on Main Street where the actual festival is happening are open. Some of them are closed. Some of them, I don't know why they were closed because they sh could have been open and I think they would have made a lot of money, but that's just me. Some people don't want to deal with insanity. I was told repeatedly that this was the busiest one they've ever seen. Again, not surprising. It's kind of the same thing with Penhurst Paracon. During lockdown, I think a lot of people started getting really hyper fixated on uh, the paranormal and cryptids and the unknown and unexplained as a way to kind of deal with being faced with our own mortality and all of that with lockdown and COVID. And so um, it's not surprising to me that more people were like, oh my God, I learned about Mothman. And then I found out there's a Mothman festival. I want to go, okay? From what I could tell, I was the only person that actually come from California, uh, which is interesting. And once again, people were like, oh my God, you came far. Are you like just a massive fan? And then I'd be like, yes, but also 
I have a stupid job. <laughs> it's the most fun job in the world. But when you have to explain it to people, <laughs> it's very stupid. A lot of them were also very concerned that I came here alone, which I should just get used to at this point. It happens everywhere. I don't know why I make a note of it. So there's little spots everywhere to get the kind of food. And there's a few more food trucks kind of parked everywhere. Some of the businesses as well, they may not have had their actual stores open, but they actually set up vendor spots for themselves outside of their stores, which I thought was very clever because it's like, oh yeah, here's all of these specialty items that we made or are doing or here's how we're getting involved in the festivities but also if you're not too far come check us out when there's not a mothman festival and a metric fuck ton of people here i think that's very smart and clever so i always talk about how there's not enough things to do here at events and things like that the main things to actually do for the mothman festival are obviously vendors checking out the local establishments then you have the food area there's like one main strip of food and then there's a couple sprinkled around throughout the rest of the event. Um, they had the monster guys, the uh, the monster men, monster mountain monsters. They're everywhere. They're very nice. Again, I didn't see them walking around this time the way I saw at Paracon, but Paracon was also more contained. Point Pleasant is like a city with like inhabitants. So like I get them not walking around, but it was funny to walk by there and see them like yelling at each other to not slap the table and things like that. That's always fun. And then there's also a couple of photo op spots. Obviously there is the Mothman statue. So the line goes all the way back there. Time to so maybe I'll try later, but right now is a no. <laughs> There was also this whole thing where people were bringing him beans and Sprite. I have to look into that a bit more because I don't get that reference. My guess based off my knowledge of how the internet works is that it's BuzzFeed Unsolved related, but I will look further into that. Multiple other photo op spots. If you walk past the food court and go out down to where the river is, there is actually a little amphitheater actually built into the side and they have bands set up and bands performing pretty much all the time which is very cool. The name of the game here is definitely Wander, because how else would I find something with the name of Mothman Pestris? So that's just the only thing you can find wandering. You know what I'm saying? Further down, if you go back to the main street and go all the way down, all the way, all the way down, I think they should have advertised this more. I think they should have made a bigger deal about this. That's just me, but again, little, little tweaky things, okay? If you go all the way down to what you think is the end of the festival, is the senior center. And that is where they had the speakers talking. Now these speakers could be various UFO cryptid specialists. They had Faye speak yesterday. I got the tail end of her talk. Um, she first saw Mothman when she was about 12. And this was, if I'm remembering the timeline correctly, it's actually before the bridge collapse is when she and her siblings said they saw the Mothman. And she is very firm in what she saw. She will keep talking very, very sweet. Then today I caught the tail end of the title of the talk was UFOs and National Security. Caught a little bit of that. Um, and he was telling a story about how while he was overseas in Iraq, there were um, two people that um, apparently ran to surrender and were screaming ghosts and aliens. Each of them were one was screaming ghosts, one was screaming aliens. But prior to saying that, he I don't know if he admitted to war crimes or not to try and like explain how this was not normal because they would trick you into thinking they were going to surrender. I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know when you forget where you are <laughs> for a minute? Because he was like sermonizing this. It was very odd. It was a, an interesting experience. I try to be open-minded, but motherfuck. <laughs> Along the same route with weapons and ammunition left with shoes and clothing. It was like somebody snatched them old boys up out of there. But that building is really far down. And unfortunately, that senior center actually only holds like max 150 chairs because the fire marshal and they don't want to get shut down they were very sticklers about if you there's no seat you're not in there if you're not sitting your butt in a seat you're not in there there was times where we were waiting outside and so i was talking with some of the staff because i had asked i was like oh what about the theater like is that at all operational because you'll see in some of the clips they have the the marquee it says like welcome to point pleasant mothman festival september 16th and 17th and i was like oh is that at all operational and I had been told it's not because the sewage has backed up underneath the stage. And one of the other, uh, when I when we, I was talking with another one of the organizers, they told me, yeah, last year we were having a lot of issues because the stage was burping at us. Yikes. But that theater holds 400 and they are hoping that someone buys it from the current owners. It's currently privately owned and they are doing nothing with it and fixes it up. I'm not going to lie. I was thinking thoughts. <laughs> I've always wanted to own a little theater. 
but I would like to own it where I can see it and I am not moving to West Virginia. <laughs> There's also a few other shops that are like big shops like Bunker 286. 616 something the trading post that's a big one obviously the mothman museum yesterday the line was way too long i did not do that yesterday also yesterday was um moth jam so that's moth jam and if you're a veteran it's free if you're not a veteran then it's 15 dollars, and you get two beers for that and they have music playing till nine o'clock it's called moth jam i did not go in there because he was tried to pitch it to me based on like yeah the beers don't count as money but I don't even drink. Aside from like the main area of the vendors, even walking over, there were people who had set up tents and were like, hey, we're selling cookies. Here, we're selling hats. Side note, um, this is the only place, I think, where I can see one booth. And at that booth, they are selling both a Blue Lives Matter flag and a made you look red joke hat. I don't know what to do with that information, but it felt weird. Also weird here, and this personally I, is something I've not personally looked into specifically when it comes to cryptids, but the relation of religion with different cryptids. Now, I did hear some people say that they do believe that Mothman too is an angel and that it's just like, that's why he was warning people and all of that. And so there I can understand that correlation. But it was interesting to walk into the Bible store that is on Main Street to see rosaries and like Bible journals and alien plushies on sale on the same display is like very interesting to me. And I, I think there's something there to look into more. Like the, the correlation and the intersection of religion to mythology and cryptids and the paranormal and all of that because there are some people like I had a girl in high school that I was friends with who was very very Christian who straight up told me I was going to hell one for being bi but also for saying that I believe that aliens are probably out there because there's just too much out there for us to know everything she fully told me I, I was gonna go to hell and that <laughs> I was gonna burst into flames one day so like it's interesting to me to see okay is it just like the plushies are our highest seller. So we just keep restocking the plushies, you know, forget everything else. You know, I just, I don't know. I, there, I think there's a lot more there and someone with like a theology degree <laughs> is more qualified to look into it than me. So it's after six, a lot of businesses are closed. Vendors are packing up. Some are still out here. Gonna make the truck back to the rental. The question is, is if I have a flat tire when I get there or not? We're hoping for no. Positive thinking now. The traffic was not nearly as bad today. And traffic by West Virginia standards is like Sunday morning, LA standard. There was like no traffic getting in, no parking issues, none of that. And so I was like, okay, cool. There's no one here because it was pouring rain this morning. And pouring rain by mine standards as a Californian where it miss as a downpour. So um, it was raining a decent amount. And so I walked over to the museum and the museum had not opened yet because it was before 10. I figured, okay, I'll just get in line now and then I'll be like one of the first groups in and hopefully I don't wait that long. Ended up waiting about an hour ish to actually get inside which was not too bad except it did ruin the rest of my day because i was soaked through i was wearing uh my hand-me-down nice it's not real suede i don't believe but it's, it's it's a nice jacket because it's like kind of the perfect weight for like when it gets chilly but it's not like bulky so it's not heavy you know it's like the perfect kind of jacket for this thing um it's not water resistant whatsoever it's soaked through i used it to cover my head and my hair i took it off to like fix my glasses at one point and the whole back of my head was just soaping wet so i was like oh this sucks and then i was just miserable i was like cool i'm just getting wet i'm soaking wet and um the thing with having a dump truck of a butt <laughs> i can't even say with a straight face um it's just kind of always out <laughs> and so <laughs> it's just soaking wet <laughs> But I finally made it inside the Mothman Museum and I can say that I did because I fully yesterday was like, God, if I don't make it inside, I guess I'm just going to have to come back. Like I was fully resigned to not getting inside this time. It's $5 to go into the Mothman Museum per person. Inside, they have a bunch of different newspaper clippings, a few pieces of memorabilia from John Keel, who was the main investigator. He wrote the Mothman Prophecies. The book um, was actually looking into Mothman prior to the bridge collapse because he was looking into these uh, reports prior to the bridge collapse. A bunch of things from uh, some various witnesses that have witnessed mothman over the years some of them have whole little rooms dedicated to them others just have little uh shadow boxes dedicated to them they have a whole section for the mothman prophecies movie with the different articles and memorabilia and things like that that were in the movie and the museum itself is actually going to be opening up a mothman escape room very soon it looks like uh, they're currently in the works of getting that done also another spot in the um actual 
street is going to be a mothman airbnb i entered to win a free night there so if i win that you'll be coming with me but who knows <laughs> things that cost money so it was the hayride the museum obviously uh there's no pre-sale for pretty much anything they do that on purpose they don't want anyone to like jump the line it's not fun for anyone they don't want to have to turn people away once they get there and be like well i didn't know i need to buy tickets in advance that type of thing so they have the tickets on site as well if you want to buy a ticket for something get in line immediately um the hay ride was yesterday there was two or three different ones i believe like different time slots specifically and everyone i spoke to who made it inside they all had been in line at like 8 8 15 for something that didn't happen until the afternoon evening so um get in line early the line is long especially for those like i said the talks were for free however i told them i said you know something that you could do because i was talking to them about paracon because they were trying to see if they could get they were like yeah we were trying to see if maybe they could get a grant if they declare the um the theater a historical site. And I was talking to them how at the Pennhurst Asylum that I previously went to for Paracon, you can go check out that video as well. They actually purposely did not have it declared a historical site, partially because the state wants it to disappear. They don't want that history preserved, but they actually are able to do a lot of the preservation themselves with a lot less uh, red tape by not having it declared a historical society, uh, a historical site, sorry, not historical society, historical site. You can absolutely let me know how you feel about that and what the ethics of that are, um, like private ownership of historical landmarks and things like that. Currently, the theater is privately owned and so is Penhurst State Hospital. Um, so let me know what you think about that. But I was talking to them as well. I was like, you know, something that you could do because I think obviously the ticketed events here, like the museum and the hayride, those are very popular. Them costing a couple of bucks is not a big deal. I think there would be nothing wrong with you being like, hey, if you want to make sure you have a seat to this talk, you can buy a ticket here and then say, oh yeah, when you buy a ticket, the money is going to restoring the theater. Like have a goal in mind versus just like, yeah, this costs money. It's kind of like when you're getting married and instead of just having a honeymoon fund, you say, oh, help buy us dinner for our honeymoon, you know, that type of thing. Um, when there's an actual specific goal in mind versus just like a restoration. People are more likely to um, be supportive of that cause when they actually know where the money is going. GoFundMe also would do really well if you advertised it through the uh, museum as well. Again, make it the Mothman Theater. I don't know. Use this Harbinger of Doom to bring in some people. Also yesterday, this is funny to me now, but like it really should, when I explain this to people, it bothers them. I think it's funny. Basically, my father does not worry about me at all some people are like oh my god does your father know what you're doing you're like really close to your dad does he what is, how does he feel about this the lo as long as i'm not talking about scientology my dad does not care what i do <laughs> <laughs> i messaged him last night i was like hey i'm gonna go ghost hunting um with a group of strangers on a boat just say no no response nothing this morning i had to call him three times to be like are you alive what is going on basically haunted majestic is a decommissioned world war ii boat that has been turned into several different things from several different private owners and is now a haunted attraction that is going to be a haunted house slash haunted experience later this month okay and uh, they were advertising at Mothman Festival. And so I was like, okay, this will be fun. I haven't done ghost hunting since Paracon. I might as well go do that. So I signed up for it. Um, it was 20 bucks for one person. There's only 20 people per night uh, per time slot. So there was 20 of us in the 9 p.m. one. I'm not going to talk about it a ton because there's going to be a whole short form breakdown of all of that and the review of that over on TikTok and shorts here. I love seeing you guys, especially at events. The, the I, It's so funny when it's like, I did not expect to see you here. I'm everywhere, baby. I'm Mothmanda. <laughs> What's also funny to me is when I go to a restaurant out here and I go and get myself some food and then at the end they're like, by the way, I love your videos. Why are you here? The threat of seeing small entertainment at your small town restaurant is never zero. <laughs> no Mothman sightings. Not that I expect to see him or anything like that. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what camp I'm in as far as like his current existence. I just like the idea of Mothman more than anything. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, truly. Would I come back again? Yes, a bunch of my friends were like, what the fuck, I would have come with you. I told you guys about it. None of you wanted to come. I don't know what you guys want me to do when I tell you exactly where I'm going and none of you are like, oh yeah, sure, I'll go with you. I already booked the hotel. They ended up giving me two beds. You could have bunked with me, but whatever. 
you wanted to stay home and like have a real job and a real life. <laughs> I think what's something that's very interesting about this as well is like the people that love this event specifically was really nice to see. Not just the the locals and the people that are like running the event, but also like the attendees. Um, I met a couple of people that are like, oh yeah, I've been to like the last four. This is our second one. This is our first one. And it's so exciting. I've been wanting to come for years. I overheard someone say this is the most gay people I've ever seen in West Virginia in one place. I cannot attest to the validity of that statement. But I did clock a lot of gays. <laughs> I upped that population by one. <laughs> I loved everyone's different cosplays. There was a lot of people dressed up from the game Fallout. Don't ask me questions. I don't know. There was a lot of people dressed up in their own versions of different Mothman. A lot of like very casual fits, like the implication of Mothman. Mothman bounding, if you will. And then people in full on full Mothman suits and costumes. Apparently at one point, one of them got on with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man that was in like the little costume on a boat last night um, after I left which was very cool apparently. I saw photos of that with like glowing red eyes on top of a boat. I really think that like the little tweaks that could be made are mainly better communication, updating the website more, updating your Twitter. You have not updated your Twitter since what looks like 2017. <laughs> you have the Twitter, use it, okay? That's all I'm saying. I think having an extra ticketed event that is specifically for like funding, you know, restoration of the theater or something like that, working with the the current private owners and all of that, I think that would be a really great thing and something that a lot of people could get behind. Again, it's a piece of history. It's a better venue for a lot of things. That's really nice. It's currently the state theater, it looks like. If you make it the Mothman Theater or like officially like Point Pleasant Theater or something like that, like, and you like get like really cool light up signs with that, the photo potential there, insane oh um there was the 5k that they did saturday morning i missed this however i do think that if i were to do this again i would try and do the 5k because that's a doable amount of miles for me to actually run and apparently mothman chases you and that's adorable and i think that's really going to be it have you ever been to the mothman festival is this your first time hearing about mothman have you heard me call myself mothman before and you thought i was stupid and you didn't understand what that meant let me know comment down below reminder i have a podcast the swell shannon's podcast reminder that swander is now available on Spotify and this episode will be available tomorrow. Reminder, I have merch. There will definitely be a designer for this one. I just don't know what it'll be yet. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also explore my Patreon, level this down below. Like someone on social media. That'll be all up here. And that's gonna be a have a lovely day. Goodbye. Listen, Mothman was just trying to find his way to the local Piggly Wiggly just happened to land on the bridge at the wrong time and that and then it just happened to fall apart a couple of minutes later i don't think that's his fault to blame it on him really is rude thank you amy andrew alan awful aslan bj cameron christopher chris crispy crispy crash china Corey, daniela 31 don donnie elliot evan eric eall ghostly hopeless homer incognito jasmine joe john m jordan joseph justin kenny kim Kristen, lauren lamb lex lease louise may west madeline matt matthew medic meme lord michael michael j michael t micah nathaniel pat pen pink philip richard rob rosie red robert ross ryan sam serena skylar simon tasha timothy heavenly plastic tyler tenzin tom tom Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry, Zwing.